Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the R Setup Series, episode 4, Thumbnail Creation. Coming from the previous episode where we spoke about running FFmpeg. So with FFmpeg, on the last episode, we created a snapshot out of our video. So this will be our background image that we will load first. This uses the image crate. And then we would put an alpha channel PNG on top of this. So that will hold, for example, logos or in the case of uh, this uh, channel. It would be the Rust logo and then our setup uh, spelled out with my logo of my channel. Then uh, we see how we can actually select the text color for our uh, TrueType font that will then write out on top of the PNG. And for selecting the text color, we will see the usage of the conf crate, which provides some uh, interesting type conversion traits for us. And at the very end, of course, we will write all of this out as a JPEG image that we can then later use for uploading as the thumbnail to YouTube. So the crates used are the image, image proc, conf and rust type crate that will be added. Rust type is the one used for true type font parsing. Jump in uh, to the code as usual. So what we have open right now is the main RS and the big change is we added our module thumbnail and further down we are calling the thumbnail creation so which is a fairly simple call we have uh, from our thumbnail module the make thumbnail function and this takes a thumbnail path screenshot name the watermark that is pre-configured and the title that will be written out with the true type. Let's quickly open the source file for the thumbnail code. And before we do that, we should also check out the new assets folder that has an info MD. So within assets folder, we will hold the true type font. I downloaded one that is freely available from the fonts.google.com page and uh, the name is called Inter. This one will be hard-coded right now to the code. So if you want to compile successfully, you will have to download this font, unpack the zip file and then put this TTF in the assets folder. Back to the thumbnail code. Cargo can uh, create documentation for us and the first line uses the double dash exclamation mark to denote that this is the module's uh, documentation. And then uh, we already start importing the image crate, uh, image proc and the rust type elements that we will use further down. First function we can see is uh, the draw centered uh, text. And if we go further down, we will actually see the make thumbnail function, which is fairly straightforward. First uh, thing that is a bit uh, weird maybe to new users of Rust is uh, this notation and this uh, where clause. The P stands for uh, path type, if you will. And uh, this will give me an easy way to define the trait bound for the arguments of this uh, function. And the trait bound is it has to implement the sref trait for a standard path path. And now this is much shorter to read because we have make thumbnail for the type uh, p, which has to implement this sref, and then we can simply write reference to p for the target path, the background path, and the logos path. The text will be a string slice, the normal stuff we already know. Why do we use sref uh, standard path? The reason is the user of the module can then use a static string for the path because a static string has an sref into path implemented or a path object or a path buffer and many more. If this was a string type or a string slice or something similar, the end user would have to do conversions and this takes away this burden. So first line, as we already saw in the presentation, we open our background image, so the snapshot that was taken in FFmpeg in our case. And when this is not working, the application will panic as of now. This expect will write out that we cannot open the background image. 
once we have this uh, image, we have to convert it to an image uh, buffer. That's why we call this two RGBA8. So RGB for red, green, and blue, and A for alpha channel, and we have eight bits uh, per channel. Once we have that, we can now open the logos. Logos are the same thing. This is a PNG with the alpha channel. So we do the same thing. We convert it to this image buffer. And uh, once we have that, we call our draw center text that is implemented up here to write out the text that we want. So this takes the background image as the canvas, then uh, the color of the text as a pixel color, and then we have the text that was passed in to the make thumbnail function. And at the very end, we overlay our logos on top of the image. So since we have an alpha channel on our logos, this gives us a very good result. And once all of this is done, the very last step uses the image save method to write it out to the target path. If this fails, we also panic. Quick note on how we use the overlay. Those two zeros are the coordinates of the pixels where you want to place your logos PNG. Since I have the very same resolution for my background snapshot as for the logos, I take a zero zero, so they overlap completely 100%. With this, you can play with their position. And the draw center text is what we'll look at next. So draw center text. We use the same thing we did before for our make a thumbnail. But instead of the P for path, we use I for image. And this I will have to implement the canvas trait. And it has to be a mutable reference to I that gets passed in. Then for color, this is now using the associated type pixel of this canvas type. I, and once the colors fulfills this uh, pixel requirement, we are happy too. And then text is a normal string slice. The trait bounds uh, further explained are down here. We have the associated type pixel is interpreted as the image creates uh, pixel type. And this one has a sub pixel associated type. And this one has to implement the conf traits value into trait and uh, for the f32 and on top of those on top of this we need the image proc clamp trait as well this is a very complicated trait bound to pass a color to our function but this way we stay flexible for potential other pixel implementations here's the line that would uh, keep you from compiling if you didn't download the TTF file that I mentioned before. So the true type font will actually use this macro to be embedded into the binary. So we will load this TTF on comp at compile time and make it part of the binary. This include bytes is very practical. You can add resources to your single binary and this makes distribution to other people much easier. After that, we can uh, try to parse and construct a font. So from Rust type, we are using the font constructor from uh, bytes. And here we panic again when we are not able to parse from this uh, font byte data. The font size we want to use is uh, here. So it's fairly large because the thumbnails are, of course, small. So what you can read on a full screen, a full HD image will maybe go away once you scale it down. Then in order to print this text in a centered fashion, we have to figure out the metrics of the font. So we are creating a dose. Then this is hard-coded for my logo PNG. So this is the perfect uh, vertical uh, y-axis uh, position for this title to be printed. In the future versions of the Rust uploader, this will have to become some uh, dynamic feature, of course. And what we do next is we will loop over every line in the text passed in to create the necessary bitmap with this font that we have chosen. Let's look at how we get all the necessary infos to center the string. 
Let's uh, scroll a bit down in the code first to get to our loop that I just mentioned. Now, if we have the loop, what we would first do, we try to get a padding around our line of 20 pixels because otherwise the next line would be uh, touching the text that we've just written. This we uh, do in a way where we would add to the highest point of the font matrix the number 20 and of course on the x-axis to keep some space even space with the padding we also add uh, 20 pixels. Then we estimate the height of uh, each uh, glyph by subtracting uh, the descent so that's the line that's below the baseline which is the suggested uh, space that you should uh, keep for the font and we subtract that from the ascent which is the line on top of the baseline to let enough space for the characters towards the top. Once we have that we take because it's a floating number the ceiling rounded value of that as a U32 this way we have uh, pixels for our height. To figure out the width of all text combined we are using a trick. What we are doing is we are figuring out the first glyph um, values. So what we do is we get the first one out of uh, the vector then we look at its uh, bounding box we find the minimum x value and we return that to get the minimum x and then what we can do is we figure out the last glyph and once we have this one we know where this box ends and once we have this info we can compute the width of all the characters combined and this is all done in this small closure this way we keep the min x in here just temporarily and the last expression gives us the result Here's a nice to do because if you write a very long title it might not have enough space on your bitmap to be written. We have a check here that would tell you that it is going to be too wide but it will simply error out because that's an assert. You would then have to shorten the text and start over again. Then we also make sure that there are not too many lines on your title and it doesn't go beyond the image's height. Once we figured all of this out, we can use the draw text uh, mute function provided by the image proc create to write that out. So we pass the image, the color that we had, then the location to have this centered. So the whole image is width minus the width of all of our text written as a true type divided by two will give it the center position. Then we use our hard-coded uh, Y offset, scale it to the size that we've defined up here. The font that we have compiled into the binary and of course the text that we want to write. This is for each line of course repeated. In order to write the next line further down we add to our Y offset the height of the glyph. Great, so this now concludes the code to allow for automated generation of our thumbnails. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the RCTOP series, we'll be connecting to YouTube's API.